Well, finally dried up enough so I could get back to uh, get out there and fix that mess I made last winter in February when that underground power line had to be replaced. And you can see it's finally dry enough so that you can actually drive on there with a little compact tractor and doesn't sink in and the dirt's not all mud. So, you know, this is where having a compact tractor really does come in handy for when you wind up with a mess like this. You know, do it by hand would kind of take forever, but with the tractor, I just have that old landscape rake on the back of it there, and it kind of helps move the uh, the dirt and the sod and everything else around to get it back piled on the trench. Plus, the uh, weight of the tractor really does help start packing things down and everything. And you know, the bucket's a big, big handy thing there. You can see to just kind of slide the uh, the dirt back in the hole there and you know allow me to just drive over it in wheels and pack it down a little bit more so you know it's definitely it's one of those things that you um that's hard to do without if you have a large piece of property so here you can see i you know pretty much uh just have that one trench there to to clean up and kind of the mess that they made from all the mud because we did have that really warm muddy day and all the you know water was running down from the road and stuff so there are a lot of tracks and stuff that have to be covered in but anyhow i'm just uh starting with the the rake on the back of the tractor and i'm just gonna go back and forth and try to keep a, at least one set of wheels in where the uh trench was just to help pack down the dirt as it goes back in and really it's kind of still kind of muddy in that one in the trench area but um you know, a little bit at a time it will pack down and I must say that woodchuck was really wrong this year because um, we're still we still have a lot of cold here and um, getting a lot of snow and rain mix and stuff like that so you know it's nice to have a day to be able to get out and there you can see I've got it pretty much you know rough roughly graded with the rake there and so now I'm just gonna I spent a about an hour just going forward and backward over the trench um, with the rake on and at least one set of tires in the trench just to kind of pack it down and uh, just trying to kind of smooth out and pack down the whole area. So it's this is a little bit slow going but still you know really a lot easier than trying to do it by hand. And luckily, you know, there weren't any big rocks or anything like that. And the more you raked it, the more the sun was out, the uh, smoother it got and more packed down it got. So there it is. Uh, pretty much, you know, the first couple passes are done now. And it's time to just go back and get out the hand rake and start cleaning up the um, the overflow messes and leveling it off a little bit. So this is about the, uh, you know, the worst part of it is trying to get things raked off especially when you haven't used a, one of these big landscape rakes in a couple months it does get to your muscles after a while so you can see it's uh the trench area there is still a little bit muddy you can see i'm kind of sinking in a little bit and stuff and you know i got most of that done and then back by the house there uh, where they had dug through there was a underground drainage pipe for draining the um all the runoff in the front gutters and the front uh step and stuff that they had actually had a break out with the excavator so i had to go back and just dig up the two ends of that pipe there you can see and they were kind of plugged up with dirt that had gotten washed in there with all the mud and everything else so it took a little while to get everything cleaned out so that it would be free flowing again and um, you can see it was all buried in like three quarter inch stone too, so that made it a little bit easier to clean up. But the mud, the mud from last winter really did make kind of a mess out of everything. So I got those pipes dug that dug out, cleaned out, and there you see the fractured ends there, and just took out the, uh, the old 18 volt reciprocating saw there, and was able to quickly just. Uh, cut them off so that they're basically square. Now I went to Home Depot to buy some a new piece of pipe to cut and put in there and you hear the stuff that they wound up selling me. They don't sell the exact same four inch plastic pipe anymore. They've got this like dual wall one that's a 
a little bit different and it's a little bit um the dimensions are a little bit different on it too but actually it came with a coupling on one end that it was nice having it a little bit loose because it made it uh, so i could kind of squeeze it over on the angle like that and then i just had to beat it in with a rock a little bit to to get it so that it would be in line with both sides there and then they don't i didn't have a, a slip-on coupling so what i wound up doing was taking a about an eight inch piece of the pipe and just cutting one side open and just made it so it was kind of like a coupling that i could just slip right over there and you know we'd keep dirt and everything else from getting in the pipe so that was the easiest way to you know put it together without a slip coupling and then i had some pea gravel that i had laying around i just decided to use that because i didn't have any of the three quarter inch stone i figured you know any kind of gravel in the hole will keep the water flowing from the front yard i dumped a couple wheelbarrows full of that in there to make sure everything was kind of covered up good and then just went back and took a shovel and uh started just covering that over with a couple inch of the dirt there and kind of stomped it down to pack it down a little bit and this area here i'm gonna have to uh do a little more work on um i'm just gonna let it settle for a little bit and then i've got to go back and start fixing all those uh brick edgings and stuff so a little more hand raking to to get the uh clumps out and it's the kind of thing when you uh use that big rake on the tractor you always wind up with one pile in the end that you have to pick through and clean up so you know, this is kind of the final big mess clean up and getting all the chunks of sod and rocks and stuff that got dragged down to the end. And you can see there too that there's tracks going down the side of the yard there that I have to fix too. So this was uh, basically the, the first pass at cleaning it up and I got everything pretty much leveled back in with a trench and Kind of ran back and forth over it with the tractor till everything was kind of packed and leveled. And uh, there you see the tire marks and stuff. And thought I'd just show you over here. Um, last winter, somebody decided that they wanted one of my pine trees out front for a Christmas tree. And uh, they just went back and cut it down and took it. And uh, you just can't trust anybody up here. But there's the uh, first sign of spring that we're seeing. The spring bulbs are just starting to poke through there. And. And then last week, Home Depot had a uh, sale on the mulch for $2 a bag. So I ran over to grab a uh, pallet of that. There's like 60 bags of that that um, we'll do all around the house and stuff with now and fix that one area on the side there. And then it was back down for a, um, a load of topsoil. And I get this, uh, I go down to the compost place and I get a um, mixture that's 50% topsoil and 50% compost that really helps grass seed get going and usually it's nice fluffy stuff but you can see it's all it's been raining so much and it's really just soaky soaking wet and kind of heavy and wet but you know that's it's really good stuff for getting seeds going or even it's good in the garden too it really does help out so I couldn't really back the trailer onto the front yard because it's still wet and soft and it would have made just a mess with all that topsoil in it that's two cubic yards of it so i decided to do it all by hand with the wheelbarrow and uh, the rake and stuff so this part did take a couple hours to to get everything you know finally leveled out and there you can see there's a, some low spots here with a tractor i've been driving back and forth packing it down so i just you know continued uh putting some dirt on and i drove it o drove over it with the tractor again and then i packed it down and went back and put another layer on and pretty soon i had the you know the whole area pretty much leveled out and then i started going back and uh, trying to fill some of the track marks on this side you can see there so that's uh you know that's pretty much it and grabbed a 25 pound bag of a uh, just a landscaper mixed cheap grass seed because i don't know what was growing there so i have no idea i know it wasn't a real good grass it was just put in by the contractors when they built the house so i'm guessing this should come close and got that little whirly bird spreader that i use to just fill that up a couple times and uh you just crank the handle and it does a really good job at uh, just kind of spreading the seed evenly 
so you don't wind up with clumps or anything like when you do it by hand. So it's supposed to rain for the next week, so I just put the seed down and I just went back and uh, did a real quick raking to get some of the seed buried under the ground there. And then I just ran over it with um, my wife's new toy to pack it down some. So I'm hoping with seven days of rain coming that I really don't need any kind of mulch or anything on it. I'm going to take a chance like this, and if not, I've got enough seeds to go over it again, but... So there it is, uh, you know, just waiting for the grass to grow now and have to get the, that little bit of edging fixed up in uh, the mulch and landscape fabric down a little bit. But, you know, in the meantime, you can really just see how, uh, you know, how handy one of these little compact tractors is when you own a piece of property. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.